in this video we will try to see how to use azure service bus so this is going to be our sample application so we are going to write some producer code in python which is going to connect over azure service bus using this service bus connection string under azure service bus we are going to have two options one is queue and another is topic and then we will try to consume messages from queue and topic by writing some consumer application so the package that we need to install is going to be this azure service bus so let me go to azure portal and try to create azure service bus so i'm in my portal first of all i have to create a group so i can just type rg my demo app and i will just hit on create uh, this is being created now i will try to create a service bus so you can just service bus over here i'll just select service bus and then i will just try to create it i will just select my resource group and after that the first thing that you need to pass is name space name so i can just pass sp bus 3306 you can select a lo location and after that uh, you can select the pricing tier here you can see multiple pricing basic standard and premium one thing i wanted to highlight over here as a service bus as you can see there are multiple pricing options but if you are going with the basic plan then you can only create a queue and if you want to create a topic and subscription then you have to select at least a standard plan so in this video we are only going to focus on queue so i will select a basic plan over here right and i will just try to create it now my namespace has been created for service bus and you can see in entities i am only getting queues i am not getting a topic option because i have selected a basic plan so let me click on queue and let me try to create any queue over here i can just type my demo queue so you can see the max queue size is coming 1 gb you can increase it based on your requirement after that the max delivery count is 10 the number of maximum delivery you can get in one shot this is going to be 10 records because this is for demo purpose so i will go ahead with the default one i guess that 10 would be sufficient and then message time to live here the by default date is 14 days it means the messages that we are pushing on this particular queue that is going to be live uh, over over there for 14 days but after 14 days it's going to get expired so you won't be able to find those messages on the queue after 14 days and then the log duration so this log duration actually you can define it so by default this is one minute whenever any consumer is live and it has subscribed to queue to, to consume the messages then it will apply a lock and that lock duration is going to be for one minute during that period if any other consumer is trying to consume a message from the queue then that particular message is not going to be visible for other consumers so there could be two scenarios after that so either a consumer can co process that particular message from a queue within a one minute or suppose like if there is any error happens then that particular message is going to be visible on the queue after one minute because the first consumer was was not able to consume the message with it one minute so this is how actually you can define it instead of one minute you can also define it in seconds you can see over here like set the amount of time that a message is locked for other receivers after its lock expires a message pulled by one receiver becomes available to be pulled by other receivers only and only if the lock expires default is one minute and maximum we can go for five minutes now if you check this box enable dead lettering on message expiration then what would happen like as we have seen earlier the message is going to be live on this particular queue for 14 days so after this it is going to be deleted from the queue but if you just enable this particular option over here then all these messages is going to be persisted in the dead letter queue and at the last you can enable partition across multiple message broker and message store i will go ahead with this these default values so i will just hit on create and you can see like my queue has been created over here here you can see message count active message dead letter message and a scheduled message now i will try to connect to this particular queue and will try to push some messages so for that i I need to get a connection string so i will go to to shared access policies and here i will click on root manage shared access key and from here you can get the key so here this particular shared access policy is giving the manage control but if you want to share it with you know external consumer then you can create another policy over here by clicking on add button and then you can probably just want it to give the listen access or the send access right you do not want to give a full manage control to any external vendor or any external consumer so that also you can control it for this particular demo i will go ahead with the existing policy and here i do have the connection string so i will just copy it from here and then i will just go to my code and first of all i will try to produce a code so here i will just replace this connection string which i have got from there so i have given the connection string and i have given the queue name 
So let me try to push some messages. For that, actually, we have to write a producer code. First of all, actually, we have to install the package. So once this particular package has been installed, then we can import these packages from here. So we need to have service bus client and service bus message. And this is going to come from Azure door service bus. The first method here I am defining send message to a queue. So you can see like we have to create a service bus client and this service bus client is going to be created from this uh, using this particular package, which is service bus client. And I need to pass a connection string. So because we are going to utilize the connection string from here. So we are just passing the connection string. And under that, I'm just passing a connection string, which I have created. And after that, like I have to send a message to the queue. So we have to get a queue name because once you get a connection string, we also need to check like, okay, which particular queue you have to send your message to, to get a queue name, you can utilize this particular client, which, which we have created over here. And then we can utilize this get queue sender and we can pass a queue name. So now we have created this sender instance. Using this sender instance, we can send a message. To send a message, we have to use this service bus message, which is again going to come from the service bus. And whatever message we want to pass, we have to pass it under this. So here I'm just passing hello from Java. To send this particular message, I'm using sender dot send messages and this particular message. And then I'm just printing it out, message sent successfully. If you're not able to send this particular message, then I'm just printing out error, like whatever we are going to get from here. So let me try to save this particular method and and then let me try to run the send message to queue. So I will just try to run this particular file. And here I can see message sent successfully. So I will just go to my Azure portal. We'll try to refresh it. And I can see, okay, one message count. And here also it's saying like, okay, one active message. So here you can see the active messages count is one. Like as soon as they have sent the messages. So in the request, you can see a spike over here and other parameters which we have defined. So the message lock in is one minute and other parameter. Now it confirms that, okay, the message has been sent. So let me go back to my queue again. So this is how you can send a message one by one. But what if actually you have to send the messages in the batches, right? So for that, the rest of the things are going to be same. Like we have to create a service with client. Then we have to create a sender using a queue name. Additional thing, what we need to do is to create this batch message instance so that we can create it using this sender dot create message batch. And then we have to add the messages, whatever we are planning to send in this batch. Here I'm going for 10 records because this is our queue configuration. Maximum what we can send is 10 in one go. So I'm looping over and creating similar messages 10 times. And as we know, like if we have to send a message, then we have to send it under service bus message. And then once we have all these messages, I'm just adding it in the batch. And then at the last, I'm utilizing this sender dot send message to send all these batch messages. So here, instead of sending message one by one, I have created this batch message and then I'm sending it in one go. So let me try to run this particular code now. And you can see send a batch of 10 messages. This is what I have printed. It means the code has run successfully. So ideally, if I go to my portal and refresh it again, so I should be able to see 10 additional messages. So the total count is now 11. So you can see the active message count is 11 now. So this is how actually you can send a message to a queue. Now the next part is to consume messages from a queue. So here we have seen, okay, this part we have covered where we have written a producer code and send a message to a queue. Now actually we have to consume the messages from here. So few things that that we need to keep in mind. First thing, this queue is only useful if you need to process passage by a single consumer. If you want to process messages by multiple consumers, then the topic is an ideal option and queue is not an ideal option because what would happen once you introduce a message to a queue and if you do have a multiple consumer, then the first consumer, whoever has got access to this particular queue, he would be able to consume all those messages. And then once the messages is consumed, there won't be nothing on it. So even if you have the consumer do, which is going to consume the messages from here, he won't be able to see any of the messages on the queue. Let's try to write a simple consumer application first, and then we will go over the some specific scenario, which I want to cover for the consumers. So I have updated my connection string and you can see to consumer messages 
first of all we have to create a service based client what we have created for producing messages also so you need to pass a connection string then you have to create a client so in the producer we were creating this sender instance using this get queue sender but in consumer we have to use this get queue receiver and have to pass a queue name and it will create you a receiver client once you create this receiver client you have this receive messages under that receive messages you can have this this two parameter mac message count and max wait time so max message count can let you know like once you subscribe to a queue so in one shot how many messages you can consume it so here because our queue configuration is 10 so we know 10 messages are there which can be consumed in one go and under time is this mac wait time you can define we once consumer has been subscribed to a queue it will wait for this particular time before any messages can be arrived if the messages is not arrived then it will return you an empty list from here so max message count you can see and then the max wait time here you can see maximum time to wait in second for the first messages to arrive if no messages arrive and no timeout is specified this call will not return until the connection is closed if specified and no messages arrive within the timeout period an empty list will be returned so you can play with this if you're not defining any parameter over here then it will wait for the message to be arrived until the connection is closed now because we are going to have a multiple messages over there on the queue so I'm just going over the messages and we'll try to print it a one by one. So let me try to run this code now. And you can see like I have got these messages. Hello from Java. This is sample message, sample message, whatever we have pushed as of now. Now if I go to my queue, right, and we'll try to refresh it. So you can see the active messages counter is still there, right? But if I try to run any other consumer application as of now, so I have written this consumer2.py. This is a replica of the first one because now I want to go over this different scenarios. So suppose like there is a queue and there are some messages over there and I have consumed the messages from this particular consumer. So can I consume it from consumer two as well? So let me try to run this particular application now. And you can see like I was able to consume it from this consumer as well, though this is a different application, but I was still able to consume it. So why this is happening? Because what we have discussed earlier, if the messages has been consumed from a one consumer, then it will just go away from this particular queue. Like it won't be visible on the queue anymore. It will be vanished from there and no consumer would be able to consume it. So for that, actually you have to complete the messages. As soon as any consumer consume it and mark that particular messages as complete, then it will be gone from the queue. And here we were able to consume the messages because we were not marking our messages as a completed one. So here you can see I was consuming the messages and printing it. I had commented out this particular option where I was marking this message as a complete. In this case, if I enable this option, right? so let me try to save this. This is a consumer one application. And now let me try to run this application. Now, again, I was able to get all these messages, but I have marked this message as a complete one. Uh, let me try to go to dashboard now. And now let me try to refresh it. And you can see like all those messages has been gone. Now, actually, let me try to run this consumer one.py again. Now I'm not getting all these messages. All this has been marked as a completed and as soon as any messages is marked as a completed it will be gone from the queue so this particular functionality is there in the queue to avoid duplicate processing of the messages and now you can see all the messages has been gone first time when i run it it uh, consumed all the 10 messages only and one message was still left which was consumed in the second run why this is happening because we have specifically defined over here max message uh, count is 10 so in one go we can only get like 10 messages so out of 11 it has marked completed only 10 messages one message was left which we have covered in the second go now all the messages has been gone from the queue if i go ahead and try to run this consumer.2.py it won't be able to find any messages over there so you can see like when i try to run this consumer2.py it was not able to get any of the messages so this is why this particular queue is ideal only for single consumer because out of two consumer if one consumer has been subscribed to this particular queue and has started marking those messages as a completed one then the consumer too won't be able to get any messages and once the consumer one started processing messages then this will apply a lock-in and that lock-in we know like it's going to be visible for one minute so under one minute the consumer
polymer one has to process a particular event or if it is not able to process that event then only the message is going to be visible on the queue in our case what exactly happened consumer one was able to subscribe to this topic was able to mark those messages successfully so when the consumer two runs it was not able to get like any kind of messages so now you know the answer if two consumers are trying to read the queue one by one then only one would be able to process messages and then what would happen if there are two consumers trying to read the queue concurrent so instead of getting messages from the queue one by one what would happen like okay if there are two consumers and they try to subscribe to this particular queue at the same time this is where the consumer competing patterns comes into picture so out of two consumers whoever you know subscribe to this particular queue first he would be able to get hold of all those messages and then the second consumer has to wait for processing to be completed so because now we don't have any messages on the queue so let me try to push some messages first so we'll try to use our producer batch code for this and we know like we can push 10 messages in one go so i will just try to run this so now we do have 10 messages over here now let me just try to write a simple code this process one is for consumer one and this process two for consumer two dot py i'm trying to invoke these two processes in one go and wait for this process to be finished i invoke these messages and you can see like consumer one was able to get a hold of it first and then it has received all those messages whereas from consumer two i have got nothing okay so again let me try to run this code and in this case because all the messages has been consumed and mark completed so i won't be able to get any output from any of the consumers because there are no messages in the queue this is why it is ideal to have a single consumer if you're working with the queue in next video we will try to go over topic and subscription and we will try to see like how this is beneficial in multiple consumer scenario and how this work differently from this queue that's all for this video thank you for watching